Hi, I'm Ed Griffin. I'm the founder of Freedom Force International and uh, Red Pill University and Red Pill Expo. And uh, it sounds like a lot, and it is a lot. It's, uh, we have a lot of things going. We're uh, trying to make a difference in the world, and we're on our way. Red Pill Expo is one of the biggest things we've ever done. It's an, a gathering event for everybody that uh, is familiar with the amazing meme that was started a few years ago called Take the Red Pill. It dates back to the sci-fi movie of The Matrix, uh, where if you took the blue pill, you went back to sleep and everything seemed fine, but you were living in a false world. If you took the red pill, well, you saw the way everything really was. And that's what we want people to be. We want them to be aware of what's really happening in their lives today. And that's the reason for the Red Pill Expo and the Red Pill University. Well, with that as background, our Red Pill Expo is coming up very soon. It's coming up in uh, June, June 21st, 2nd and 3rd, 21st, 22nd and 23rd of this year, 2018, in Spokane, Washington. I'll tell you more a little bit about that later. But the main purpose for this video is that I have on the line right now a Mark Herr. Now, Mark Herr is the guy that produced the most amazing documentary video on the, uh, on the murder, I'll call it what it is, the murder of Lavoy Finicum. Uh, you remember that what they sometimes refer to as the Oregon standoff. Well, this was uh, Mr. Finnegan was the guy that they killed there. And um, what can I say is that most people can't believe that this actually happened. And so they think that, well, he must have had it coming. You know, he was um, confronting them. He was setting himself up because he wanted to be a martyr or something like that. That's how people try and rationalize it away because they can't believe. They can't believe that their own, their own representatives and their own government agencies would actually carry out what amounts to premeditated murder for somebody who is a, a political opponent more than anything else. So anyway, this is the story, and it's needed to be told, and um, Mark Herr is the, is the producer of this film, and I've just seen the, the uh, initial trailer on the film, and I'm here to tell you it is dynamite. We have it posted to our website, and so when we're done with the interview, you'll be able to take a look and get a little peek at what that documentary is about. But for now, I'd like to turn the camera and the microphone over to Mark and say, first of all, welcome, Mark. So nice to have you with us. Thank you, Ed. I really appreciate you having me on. I know we don't have a lot of time, so let's just start with the basics. Uh, how did you get involved with this project, and, and why did you take it on? Um, two things. In uh, April of 2014, um, uh, one of my Center for Self-Governance classes was canceled in Prescott, uh, Arizona, and had some students the night before who were planning to go to a, um, a rally for the Bundy family in uh, Bunkerville, Nevada. Anyway, I ended up there and I filmed it and created a documentary called the Govern V Governing series, and it's about that day. Uh, the most harrowing experience I've ever had in the United States where uh, armed uh, local, state, and federal government officials and regular folks uh, from Nevada, as well as Bundy and Bundy supporters, were in an armed standoff. It was the most harrowing thing I've ever seen. Little did I know that Lavoy Finicum was actually there in attendance. And I asked Lavoy Finicum, as they were coming off the mountain behind the rally stage on their way to the overpass where the standoff took place, there was a group of horses and one of those horsemen was Lavoy Finicum. And I asked that group of horsemen, where are you going? And little did I know that that irony would seal my fate in telling the story of Lavoy Finicum's journey to Oregon. Um, in 2016, in about May, I would received a phone call from Jeanette Finicum, Lavoy's widow, and his oldest daughter, Tara Tenney, asking me to speak at the six month anniversary of his death. Well, I had been critical of the strategy in taking over the refuge and making the point the way they did. And so I was concerned that maybe they didn't want me to come to, their, to the memorial uh, since I had spoken critically of the political strategy. They both disagreed and felt that it was something that I needed to do. They needed to hear both sides. Um, and so I did a lot of research, Ed. Ed. I, I went to YouTube and I watched all of Lavoy Finnicum's videos over eight and a half hours. And I was shocked. I was, I was deeply shocked because I realized I did not know this man. I just knew that this was somebody killed on the side of a road in Oregon. 
when I watched the video, um, I prepared my speech based on what he said. And I used a lot of his quotes for the first few minutes. And I had people in the crowd at this six-month memorial booing me and some hiss. One gentleman got up and walked out. And what I realized, Ed, is that the American people, including people who love liberty and freedom, they don't know this man. They don't know what he was standing for and what he died for. And so, not, and, and I have to confess, neither did I. And that really set me on this journey of, of getting to know the Finnicum family and, and, and really studying uh, who Lavoie Finnicum was and what he stood for and why he got out of his truck on January 26, on that fateful day in 2016. And so here I am, uh, it's 2018, and we've, we're about to complete part two of the Govern v. Governing series called Lavoie, Dead Man Talking. This is Lavoie in his own words, telling the story of his journey to Oregon and his stand for something called dual federalism, which we'll get into in the documentary. So that's what, uh, that's what motivated you. Well, what is this, uh, this red pill that you took? What is this awakening, this awareness that you had that caused you to, to take this step? So uh, the, the interesting thing is, is that most Americans don't know our American system of government. They, they're taught that it's a, a democracy or republic, or they're taught that issues and candidates um, are the, where we should spend most of our time, our resources, and our energy. Um, and the red pill is this, that there are, there are two types of politics being played on the same game board. You're either playing checkers with issues and candidates, issues like immigration or drugs or uh, vaccines or health care. Uh, candidates, you know, is it Trump or Hillary or is it your governor or your county commissioner or your school board member? That's more political checkers. But there's another game being played on the same checkerboard, and it's called what I call political chess. The political chess is using the chaos created by these issues, the chaos that was created in the Bundys' lives, the chaos created in Lavoie's uh, life at his ranch, the chaos created for the Hammonds in Oregon. The chaos created in those issues and those candidates is used by a group of people in the United States and from around the world to collapse or eliminate what are called political boundaries, in this case, states and county government around the United States. I call them cooperative federalists. Lavoie Finicum was a dual federalist at heart. He believed in the federal government. He believed in state government. He believed in a clear, fixed, invisible line that separated those two governments. He also believed in the separation of powers, the executive, the sheriff, from the county commissioners of Mojave County in Arizona. He believed in something the founders originally designed in our system of government called dual federalism. Since the 1890s, the cooperative federalists have been collapsing those boundaries as a result of the Civil War and other things. And they have successfully changed the meaning of words for those people who support the Constitution or liberty or freedom. Lavoie Finicum, uh, Ed, was label lynched. That's the term that I've come up with. He was label lynched. He was lynched as a domestic right-wing extremist on the verge of committing a article, excuse me, Title 18, Section 23031, Act of Domestic Terrorism. And as a result, that engaged local, state, and federal law enforcement in Oregon, as well as the Federal Bureau of Investigation. They profiled him and considered him the top threat in the Oregon occupation. And as a result, they trapped them on that highway in Oregon because in their view, as local, state, and federal law enforcement, they were stopping a potential domestic terrorist act being committed by a potential domestic extremist who was either considered anti-government, he was considered either rejecting federal authority, or he was considered a sovereign citizen. This is all in the Department of Homeland Security's lexicon on domestic extremism. It came about from the 2001 Patriot Act, in which the definition for domestic terrorism was redefined and added to Title 18 of the Federal Code. And as a result, somebody like Lavoie Finnicum, who's just a rancher with no speeding tickets, misdemeanors, or felonies, 
is now profiled as a domestic extremist on the verge of committing an act of domestic terrorism. And the red pill is this, Ed. If we continue to play checkers, the cooperative federalists are going to continue collapsing the political boundaries and more people like Lavoy Finicum are going to have to stand and probably give their life in order to preserve our dual federal system. So I think there's something to learn from, from somebody like a Lavoy Finicum. Mm -hmm. That's quite a message. It's a deep dive in the analysis of what went on. I, yes. I can't tell you how much I respond to what you just said and how much I appreciate that you're taking that message out. It's not something that people want to think about. It, it requires too much uh, time, too much effort, too much thought, too much preparation. Right. So they want to just take things on the surface. But uh, yeah. so I, I'm seeing that you've already answered my final question, which is what is it you want to accomplish with this uh, video? So just rephrase it. What is your goal with this uh, documentary film? Ed, 99.9% .9 of the American people, the population do not own a cow. Over 80% of the American people don't own more than an acre of land. So how are they supposed to understand Lavoie Finicum's plight regarding grazing fees and cattle rights and ownership of the land? What they need to see and what they can understand is that liberty hangs by a delicate thread when it comes to political boundaries. There's a reason why there's a separation of the state from the federal government. We need to learn it. Lavoie Finicum tried to teach us. There's a reason why the executive and the legislative powers are separated at the county and the state and the federal levels. Lavoy Finicum tried to teach us that. This documentary is really going to, I believe, help the American people regain an understanding of dual federalism and reignite in their heart a desire to preserve dual federalism, not just for themselves, but for the next generation and beyond. That's it. That's a wonderful goal. And I think that we will achieve that goal with your help, of course. That's our goal as well. So, Mark, I know there's much more to say, but uh, our time is up. So thank you for that. I'm looking forward to uh, meeting you in person in Spokane Likewise. At, the Red, at the Red Pill Expo. And for our viewers and, and listeners, that again is uh, Red Pill Expo in Spokane, Washington, June 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. And the, the world premiere of um, this documentary film of Lavoie, Dead Man Talking, is going to be held right there at the Red Pill Expo. And we're very honored and grateful that you selected our event, Mark, to, uh, to hold the premiere of this great documentary. And we'll see you all, I hope, in Spokane at the Red Pill Expo. If you want to learn more about it, go to your internet and put in redpillexpo.org. <laughs>